Hi and thanks for joining us today for what is episode 10 of MotorServe TV. I'm very pleased and excited to introduce an old friend and business associate, Mr. Amir Awan, who we are very happy to have on and feel very privileged to be with today. Amir is a serial entrepreneur and is currently the managing director of Awan Real Estate, Awan International, as well as the Nazir Awan Foundation, in loving memory of his late father, Mr. Nazir Awan. Amir has established himself to take forward the legacy of his father and family and has expanded his business ventures at a large scale, being one of the widest known and well-respected Asian business families of Birmingham. Amir is on the leadership board of the Institute of Directors for the British Asian business community, as well as an ambassador for the Pathway to Grow Network, Chutney and Chat. He's also a former chairman of the BYSA Foundation in Birmingham. Amir is a born and bred Brummie and has an amazing story and gives so much back to the community. So please join me in welcoming Amir to MotorServe UK. So, hi Amir, thank you very much for coming down. Cameron, thank you very much. It's uh, an honor to come here. Thank you very much for inviting me. I know we've been trying to arrange this for, for yeah. quite a few weeks now and yeah. due to circumstances, it's been difficult, but we're here now. Yeah, that's it, we're here now. So thank you for your time. And uh, I know you've got a very busy schedule, which we'll go into in a minute. But, uh, so I try to give you, so obviously you've got a very impressive introduction because you've done so much. Thank you. But did I miss anything? Is there anything um, else that? I suppose you said I'm a born and bred Brummie, but actually I was born in Pakistan. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> but I'm still a Brummie so and a very, very yeah. proud Brummie. I've lived here all my life. I was literally three months old when I came over oh, okay. here. Okay, yeah, so um, near enough. But no, parents were settled here, but for some reason they wanted me to be born in Pakistan, which is a good thing. I'm proud oh. to, be a, uh, to be born in Pakistan. I'm a very proud Pakistani. Uh, but yeah, I am, I am a Brummie, but not born and bred Brummie. So when people say that, well, I'll ask you the question. Are you a British Pakistani or a Pakistani British? I'm a British Pakistani. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been here enough of the time. All my life. I've been here for nearly 48 years now. So uh, Excellent. I think I'm uh, allowed to call myself a British Pakistani. Yeah, that's it. I think you qualify. <laughs> uh, so we've obviously known your family for a long time, uh, since probably before I was born. So it's been many generations. Uh, but I think we first, on a kind of professional basis, on the more like, you know, being adults in the adult working life, I think I got to know you again through Chutney and Chat, wasn't it, in 2006? It was through Chutney and Chat. I think actually yeah. before that, obviously our, our fathers have known each other. We've known each other yeah. on the circuit, but we, we got to know each other a bit more through the networking events. Yeah. But if you remember when I was part of Birmingham Youth Sports Academy, I came to see you to come on as one of the sponsors, if you remember. And that was during the Chutney and Chat. So that you're right, after. it was, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so the it. Chutney event where we first met, yeah. um, and then after that, you got involved with a lot of the charity work, et cetera, that we do as well. So yeah, yeah. you're right, absolutely. So we're going back quite a few years now. That's it. I think it was 2016, 2017. It so was, it was. Yeah, it was, it was it one was. of the first, it's the big BYSA event. In it the was, yeah, in, in 2019, yeah. Uh, when we really upped the scale of uh, annual dinner and we got you on board. So yeah. thank you for that. No, no problem. Uh, thank you for having me on that. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, so, if, you know, if you go back to kind of your upbringing and like your school life, you know, what did you do? So you went to school, college, did you do uni? Uh, I did, I did. Uh, I've schooled all the way throughout uh, my life here in Britain, um, from nursery to junior school, to senior school, uh, to college, to university. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty much all the way through here I did um, my A levels at, uh, at at a college, and then from there uh, I went on to do uh, a degree in uh, um, business management at um, University of Westminster in London. Excellent. And were you at, was around Sutton Carford that you? Attended yeah, we or? well, you know, uh, we originally when we when I was born we lived around Aston and then Erdington for quite a few years. Yeah. Um, then I moved into Sutton uh, about twelve years ago. So we've always kind of lived around that area. It's an area yeah. that we're so used to, you know parents' house is very close, my other family live around there, so we're kind of a, a, a nice central location where we all kind of live nearby yeah. one another. And now my, my sister lives in Sutton Corfu now, so I've got a bit of an affiliation. There you go, that's yeah. something saying about Sutton Corfu, it's not a bad area, is it? That's <laughs> no, very good. Not as good as Solid Hole, but n well, near it's enough. debatable. But <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So you did business management at university? I did. So 
because very interesting. Because obviously, you're from a uh, and yeah, you're taking forward a, yeah. a big business family. So, was that something that you were interested in? Was that something that you were kind of pushed actually no? Into, um, or? You see, my father had a business, and it was quite um, a successful business. And he said to me, "Look, I would like you to come and join the family business because we you know we had plans to expand the business, etc." But he said, "Look, you've got to earn your way into the business." and I want to see a degree in your hand. And he said, look, I don't want to see a degree in food and tourism. Not that I, I, I have nothing wrong with that. The people who do that is very good. But he said, look, I've worked really hard um, you know, to give my time to you guys to become something of yourself. So mm. yeah, it'd be nice to have you join the family, but I want to see some substance behind it, the hard work I put in. So he said, I want a good solid degree from a good university. So that's, uh, that was his, um, uh, kind of thing that you have to fulfill the wishes for me to come in and then the plan was actually for me to work elsewhere for a couple of years mm. um, you see it's nice coming into family business but I think to really appreciate business I think you've got to work outside the business as well just to gain that experience uh, because you're not going to be treated your dad's going to treat you differently uh, um, you know your managers at work are going to treat you differently yeah, uh, not with any favoritism etc not that my dad was like that um, but at that time, um, in 99, when I finished my degree, there was already plans to expand the business and uh, move to a large premises purpose built. And that's when I was told, look, it'd be nice for you to, to join straight away. And um, it was great. It was, it was um, I think, a good decision that um, we made because they needed it. Uh, they needed yeah. more help because, you know, we're expanding the business, the business is growing. So an extra pair of hands was, uh, was something that was probably needed. Yeah, I guess as it was going through that transition, it's almost becoming the next level of a new business, really. So you would have transitioned into that. Yeah, that it was time. because you know we were bringing on a lot more lines now. We were from a very small place to a very large place. Um, mm -hmm. You had to become a bit more professional, customer friendly. Things had to change. The tilling system had to change. Your software had to change. Mm -hmm. um, so you know it's um, it's very difficult for just a small team to manage something like that. So I'm glad I I, I got in at that time because there was so much new stuff that not just my father was had to learn, but I had to bring in as well. And, you know, there was a lot more, um, someone actually was the buying, there was sales, they're looking after staff, the accounts. There was so much more that was going on. So the business was growing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have no regrets uh, of not working elsewhere. I'm, I'm happy that I came in at the time that I did because it was a very challenging time. So, and uh, they say, you know, you can't buy experience. Can it's, it's, it's one of those things that yeah. you can only really learn. So I'm glad I, I, I joined it properly in 1999. Brilliant. So when you were younger, did you used to go into work with your dad? Did you used to kind of get involved? Did he used to try and make you? I did, and I, in yeah. fact, I used to love it. I remember at the age of eight, nine, ten, going into work, yeah. um, especially around holiday times and Christmas time, especially because in them days we used to open on Saturday as well. And the good thing was my dad used to have all the fancy gadgets, you know, the, yeah, the gadgets that all the kids it. wanted at school. <laughs> I remember, I don't know if you remember the, the 16 sound keyring and, and the uh, calculator watches and all that, <laughs> and the radio control cars. And for me, it was a playground. Yeah. Um, so I absolutely loved it there, you know, uh, stacking the shelves and all that. And so, yeah, I've been, I've been actively going in uh, from a very young age. I think it's a good thing as well, um, yeah. you know, um, seeing your father work, seeing the kind of stuff that we're doing, and it gives you a bit more insight. Maybe puts a bit of fire in your belly as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, seeing business being done from a very, very young age. Uh, and that kind of spiraled on. Um, I mean, I remember I used, to buy, I used to buy stuff. I never used to take it out of the warehouse. My dad used to say, look, you're gonna, why don't you buy the stuff? And I used to go and sell it at college. And I used I to go to say, college with yeah, so yeah. much money in my hand. And I thought, <laughs> this is great. And I think that's where it kind of, the fear of business kind of stemmed from really. Yeah. And learning how to do transactions and absolutely, stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Profit margins, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, uh, no, I enjoyed that. That was a, a good experience. Uh, and I thought, you know, that's what maybe where my passion for business came from. Yeah. Um, so that was good. So, you know, I enjoyed that. Because that's always a question. It's, uh, and it's a question that kind of, everyone's got their own opinions to it. Do you think people are born business people? Do you think it's nurtured and installed? You've either, you've either got it or you haven't. You can learn. Um, but if you're talking about raw, talented business people, mm. I think that's in your blood. Um, and you know, yes, it can be passed down. You can pick things up from your mentor, like my father. I spent a lot of time with him. I saw him do business. I learned a lot from him. And that can make you into a business person. But yeah. I suppose somebody coming fresh out, of, fresh out of a university said, I want to do business. It's not easy doing business. Yeah. It's a long process. You know, it's, you've got to be prepared to work very, very long hours. You've got to be prepared to put everything into your business. 
it's hard work and do you want to take that responsibility on? That's another thing that people are not aware of how much responsibility you're taking on. Yeah. Um, um, they can acquire acumen, you can learn a business acumen. Uh, and then, you know, even if they learn it, they can become excellent business people, but I don't feel everybody can be a businessman. Yeah. It's something, because that's the thing, is it's resilience, it's a strength. It is. The like I said, there's so much responsibility that comes with it. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, you learn that with time. Um, you know, you're looking after people, your staff. Mm-hmm. They're responsible. You're responsible for them to keep the business going and looking after yeah. their family. So, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. Um, as I say, you can learn it. But like I said, if you're talking about a proper born businessman, I don't think that's, uh, that's um, you've either got it or you haven't. <laughs> Definitely. So, you just touched upon it there, but obviously you were very fortunate. And I think we all were in the community, because obviously we know you knew your father very well, and he's like, or, you know, we called him uncle, and he was uh, yes. very, very good with everyone, and he used to spend time with me, he used to spend time with everyone from the network, really, trying to help and assist. Yeah. But you had him very close as your mentor, as your kind of supporter, and you know, brought you up, helped you, uh, mm. kind of shaped you into the business plan you are today. Uh, how important do you think that is to have a mentor or someone there to help you guide you along the way? Uh, I think it's extremely important. Any person needs a mentor. You know, mm. you can kind of go off the rails at any point in time, but you need someone to keep you in check. I was extremely, extremely fortunate to have somebody like my father. Yeah. I mean, when we were growing up, yes, he was that fatherly figure. Um, but as we started doing business, I mean, I was with him for 20, 20 odd years. I worked very closely with him. We shared the same office together. Yeah. We, we'd done deals together. We worked on deals together. Um, and I'm so fortunate to have somebody like him, extremely successful in business, not just in business and also doing community work. Yeah, of course. Um, and I suppose I am the product of him. Um, you know, sometimes unknowingly, they kind of mold you into a person uh, like them but not to be like them you have to have an individual personality you have to be an individual person uh, but as far as the the business side of things are concerned he's naturally ingrained that in me over time yeah. and you know sometimes I sit there and I think well what would dad have done in this scenario yeah. and you know you answer there really because he's kind of already nurtured that into you yeah. but I was very fortunate to have that um, spending that time with him learning from him the experience like I said, you can't buy experience. You can only gain it through working with someone and, and ex- building that experience within yourself. So for me, I think it's an extremely th- important thing to have a mentor. Anybody should have a mentor. I mean, sometimes, you know, I was sitting there and I need somebody to talk to. Mm. And my, maybe it's just a mental thing. It's not probably always bad business, just to keep you in check. So yeah, mentorship, I think it's, it's, it's an extremely um, important thing uh, within business, not just in business, but with anything really. So for me, it's a very important thing. Uh, it worked for me, uh, it helped me along the way, my journey. I think it's uh, something that's quite premium. Definitely. So just on that point, you know, how have you been coping since? You know, you are you know, on your own now, so to speak, but I know you've got your management team, you've got your family and everyone around you. How have you kind of Initially, to be honest with you, it was very tough. I bet, uh, yeah. It was very tough because it happened around COVID. Um, so it was so a tough time anyway. It was a tough time anyway yeah. for business. Uh, I mean, I've talked, touched on, on this topic many times on other podcasts. Mm. You know, we're, our business was really growing rapidly at that time. And we all had roles. Um, and my dad played a very key role in, in acquiring good business deals. And then to lose somebody in the middle of COVID, you know, you got your personal grief going on. And then you kind of realize, well, hang on now, everything's on you now. The whole responsibility of all this is on you now. But I was very fortunate. I was very fortunate to have my wife by my side. Um, She stuck with me and I thought, I think it's because of her, it kind of got me through. And my support network, obviously, you know, my my, my, uh, friends and everything. But um, she was actually working beside my dad on the property side. See, I never really got involved with the property side of things. I was always on the trading side and dad would look after the property. And then uh, she was like a PA with my dad. So Mm. she would make sure the rents are coming in. So... Initially, when he passed away, I said, how am I going to know all this? Because I haven't got a clue mm. as much on the property side as do the trading side. Thankfully, you know, my wife was there and she pretty yeah. much knew everything. Obviously, the hardest part was because there was a lot of passwords <laughs> in my dad's head, yeah. which I haven't got a clue about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so exactly. that was pretty tough. But yeah. I, I would say the first year was extremely tough, you know, going through the whole grief process. And I suppose because of this, it was very, it was very difficult to grieve my dad because mm. I had to step up straight away. Yeah. I thought, well, I'm either going to go one way and completely drop off or I've got to go and, and get myself sorted out and, and get this business 
running as the way it should be. And I know the kind of person my dad was. He was always like, if you need something done, get up and do it straight away. Yeah. And that was just echoing in my head the whole time. Um, you know, but it was, it was very tough because during COVID, we couldn't even see my mom. You know, she had COVID. Yeah, of course. Um, so we literally buried my dad um, just over a week after he passed away. And I decided that the following day, I was going to go back into the office wow. and start picking things up. Because sitting at home, I would have just gone mental with the whole grief thing. Yeah. And knowing the fact that the kind of person my dad was, that, you know, that get up and go kind of thing. Well, mm. I thought, well, I need to get back to the office. Obviously, things were closed. We were a premium sanitizer supplier just before uh, all this COVID happened. So I could actually open up. I was very fortunate to have done that um, because we're essential supplier, really, because we were you know, sourcing products for not just um, sanitizer. We were doing a lot for the NHS as well yeah. and importing all these gloves, etc. So I had to get back in and, and start getting the wheels back into motion again. And my wife was there. And it was difficult because, you know, the kids were off school. They were literally spending, you know, all the time on their own in the house while my wife was with me working. So without them, without my wife, I, I, I don't think I would have got through this and, and my children really stepped up. And my staff, you know, I think it, your staff is very important. All the time uh, being with my dad, he's always treated the staff with a lot of respect. He said, if you give respect, you'll get respect back. Mm. You, you get the trust, they'll gain your trust as well. And I've got staff with me who've been with them for the last 12, 13 years. Um, so I was very fortunate in that respect. Uh, they really did step up and, and, and really got the business back into where it should have been. So we're thankful for that. So I remember from uh, like a previous discussion we'd had, or I remember you talking about it somewhere else, but was there one point where you, because you moved away from trading and you were just doing property? Yes, it was. So in 2005, uh, the original business that my father started, yeah. uh, and then he got his brother involved. And then, um, so the business was, obviously growing and then you know I, I suppose it was a foresight that they had that yeah. now the kids are growing up maybe this is a good time to maybe do a demerger um, so yeah we went through a demerger in 2005 where my father gave the trading business to his brother and he took on the properties he was saying look I'm 50 odd now and maybe I want to start taking things a bit easy and um, so yeah we party ways in 2005 so we predominantly look after property but I miss the trading I really yeah. did I missed that, that buzz of trading so uh, with the contacts that I had, I was still doing a lot of buying, selling, buying from London, selling in Birmingham, or yeah. uh, buying from Birmingham, selling in Leicester or whatever. So I was still quite involved in that side of things while still, you know, helping the property. But to be honest, I found the property very boring. I thought, oh, it's, it's okay, but it's, yeah. it's not giving me the routine that I originally had. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm thankful to God. Uh, the time that we did, uh, we, we bought quite a few properties at the time. You know, people flipping properties, buying them, doing them, or selling them. So I did that. That was all going on. So that was a nice little learning curve. Um, and then one of our tenants who was in our old premise where we originally started, the cash and carry from, wow. said that he wants to move out because his father's bought a place down the road. And um, they said, look, they're going to move there. So then I gave my dad a bit of a nudge. I said, what about start again? And he goes, no. He goes, you know, uh, he said, do I really want to do this again? And he thought about it, he goes, you know what, let's do it. Yeah. And it just so happened that the, a trade fair was on. Um, so we went to the trade fair and uh, we were meeting people and um, we said, oh, we're, we're coming back in the game again now, we're starting the old place. And they go, are you guys crazy? What do you want to come in this business for? This is a dying business now. People are trying to get out, you want to get back into it. And I remember my dad's words very well, he goes, but not everyone's name in the zero one. He goes, you watch me when I come back into the business and I'll, I'll dominate it again. And lo and behold, he did. He did. We started up in 2013 and um, people were right, yeah, trade wasn't what it was like when, yeah. it was when, we were, when we left eight years prior to that. It was a lot different. And then um, he said, no, we've got to do something different. He goes, you know, we can't just rely on your cash and carry trade. Um, and then um, he was out on the golf course once, as he does. And um, they say, you know, golf is good for two things, for networking and doing business together. Um, and we met um, a, a very good supplier uh, on the golf course. And then, um, you know, became very fruitful. We started buying off these people and selling online. And then we were introduced to the bigger boys, the bigger high street giants and the online giants we were introduced to them. And then uh, we started buying more products. Um, and then the business was literally just growing and growing and growing. Um, and we were supplying premium products to these people who um, couldn't get it directly solely from the manufacturers or the, or the main distributors. 
so we got a good foothold through there and then we did, added other products on so yeah it was um, it was interesting i think as a true businessman you improvise at certain times if yeah. you know things aren't going too well um you know we can kind of think of other things um improvisation as, as i say in business and that's what he did and that's what he did and that's what helped our business grow and we thought this is great it's nice to be back in this business again but then covid happened and um, you know business was still kind of great during covid months but obviously we had brexit in between all that as well then you can see that you know things are becoming tougher there and now you see the rise of interest rates you know it's all luxury items now mm. and now people don't really have that money for luxury items anymore service sector is great people still need the service sector but they don't have much disposable income left now to spend money in the luxury items. but again we got to improvise and and think of other ideas and other ways of having a stream of income coming in but you know we're very thankful to god god's been great god can't be thankful enough to him he's been very very generous and uh, we're still very uh, thankful for what we have and what we're doing no it's been awesome it's, it's been quite an ordeal it's been quite a few years hasn't it like with everything that you mentioned with covid with breakfast breakfast yeah but it's the crazy thing is now you look back covid and you're thinking that was a long time ago it was you can't imagine yeah. how we had to change our whole lives the whole dynamics of everything yeah and now we're kind of out of it now and think that seems a distant memory ago now but it still seems very unreal what we've just been through yeah you know, people it was crazy, with, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah people suffered with the businesses, yeah. people suffered with the mental health, the kids, what they had to go through. So it was a very, very dark time, but I'm glad we're kind of through that now. Uh, but things are still tough, still things are tough, but that word again, we've got to improvise, right? Yeah, improvise and pivot. Absolutely, to, uh, absolutely. <laughs> to change and evolve over time. So obviously in your intro, we went through all the things we're involved in. How do you fit it all in? I suppose you've, um, it's how passionate you are about something, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what I feel now. I'm very passionate about my business. I, I spend time uh, at my business, but then <clears throat> there's other things that, you know, you don't just want to be going to work and then coming home. That's not life. Yeah, life is enjoying time with your family. We do that as well. I give a lot of time to my family. In fact, I give a lot of time to my children. I think that's very, very important. But then at the same time, you know, you've got to serve the community as well. And it's a very, very important thing that my father always taught me. He said, look, you can accumulate everything and, and build up your business, but it's what you give to others, the time you give to others, and the time you spend out in the community. I mean, Birmingham has been amazing to us. We wouldn't be here if this city hadn't given us so much. And it's, I, I still say that everybody has a duty to give back to the community. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are, or you, know, you might not be wealthy, you might just be an average, but giving time back is, is essential, uh, but I, for, especially for the business community um, who have got the means, I, I, it's always worth giving that time back. And my dad always was, we, we call him a philanthropist, which he was. He, he was very successful in his business, but at the same time, he's very successful out in the community as well. He was a very well-known, highly respected person. Yeah. Um, and he never said no to anybody. Anybody who comes through that door and asks for a donation, he would never send anybody away. And he always said that to me, he said, anytime anybody comes, never let them away empty-handed. If they're doing something good in the community, it's good. But he always said, look, also get involved in <coughs> community work and, and doing some community work. And that's how I got into, into community work. I mean, <laughs> I've said it everywhere. I, our, our surname is quite prominent. It means to help others. So, yeah. you know, we, we always live up to our surname. We're very proud of that fact. My grandfather was uh, a person who didn't have much, but gave a lot of his time, a lot of his money even, uh, to help people at those times when immigrants were coming in and finding it very difficult. Uh, similarly, my dad, when he's building up his business, he spent a lot of time on a lot of boards, like Save the Children and the business. Uh, he was a founding member of the Institute of Asian Business, which is now the ABCC, which I mean, you're very familiar with, winning yeah. many boards from there, <laughs> uh, and, and many other charity boards. So I saw that him growing up at that time. He was, he was a very busy man. So I could see him spending a lot of time out there. Uh, but then he sat me down once and said, look, you need to really, really get involved in community work and build your own brand. He said, always build your own brand, be, be truthful out there, go out and do something positive for the community because he said, you can accumulate all this wealth and the business and the cars and whatever. He said, but ultimately people aren't going to remember you for that. They can remember what did this man do to leave a legacy? What did he do to help people? And I think that's a true testament of, of a person is what do they leave? What have they done to change somebody's life? And that really did hit home. And that's when I got involved with Birmingham Youth Sports Academy. Uh, I went on board there as a, as a business advisor and I saw the amazing work that that charity was doing with, with young kids who come from very underprivileged backgrounds. 
So yeah, I, was, uh, I, I went out from business advisor to vice chair, then I chaired that charity for quite a few years. And it's just amazing, you know, we can change a few people's lives. The happiness that that gives you, money can't buy that camera. Right. And, and that really hit home. Um, and then I, um, th I missed that when my father passed away. And then obviously my passion led me elsewhere and I didn't want anybody to forget someone as prominent as my dad. And um, I remember sitting down with my wife and I said, look, this, um, I need to channel my grief into something more positive. I need to do something that's going to take me away from all the, the negative things I had inside me, the, 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 the pain that I was going through at the time. And it was, honestly, I'm not even joking to you, it's about two weeks after my dad passed away. Mm. that I decided that I was going to set up my own charity in his name and, and do some positive work, not just within um, uh, the community of Birmingham, you know, outside other countries that needed the most. So we've done a lot of work. We joined hands with a lot of really, really good other organisations. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really, really helpful. You know, it um, takes a lot of pain away. Like I say, it challenges your grief into something more positive. And if you can put a smile on somebody's face, you've done your job. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to make time. You talked about time. How do you make it? You've got to make time to make it happen. Everybody can say, I, th I would say a lot of people would say that, oh, we haven't got time to this. We can't be bothered. You need to get out there and do it. You've got to make sure that you've got time. I mean, you, we, we make time not just for our family and our business. You've got to give time to yourself as well. That's mm. very important for your mental health thing. So I give a lot of time to myself. I, I go to the gym three, four times a week for myself, for my mental health. Wow. Uh, and then obviously we go to a lot of networking events together. Yeah, yeah, that's so it. we always see each other there. A lot of reward. Um, so it's nice to go out there and, and meet new people. You know, um, going to the events uh, is very, very important. You, know, you don't just go there to uh, give uh, advice. You take a lot of advice on board as well. Yeah. We're always learning, right? Yeah, exactly. We're always learning. So, learning so like I said, how do you make time? You got to make time. Yeah. So how many hours do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember sending once in a podcast, about four or five hours, but I think as age goes on, uh, you need a bit more. Well, actually, no, you don't need a lot more. Um, generally speaking, five to six hours is more than enough for us. Yeah. Um, so, so for us entrepreneurs or for us humans? I think, <laughs> well, I've never been one to stay in bed till 10, 11, 12. We're not like that. Even at yeah. university, right? When we go by a party, we come back and I'm, I'm always up to go to university. <laughs> it's just something that I've never yeah. been a late sleeper. Yeah, now and again, okay, you spoil yourself and get up at 10 o'clock. But I've not been one like that. Uh, we've always kind of been get up and go. My kids... You know, um, we leave the house at seven in the morning, so we're up at six in the morning. Um, oh. I suppose it's, um, if you've done good and everything's going well, it's the quality of sleep you have, isn't it? Yeah. It's the quality of sleep you have. Uh, but like I said, as you get older, the less sleep you need. You know, you want to do other stuff. Sleep yeah. is not that important. It's important, <laughs> but not that important. <laughs> so for yourself, obviously things, you know, Isha will keep going well and everything will keep going. What's next? What are your big plans or aspirations? Um, you see, at the moment, the way trade is right now, it's not what it used to be like, mm. especially now with the interest rates going up and obviously the, the uh, impact of Brexit that we had. People, well, uh, when I say people, I mean um, the big giants that used to buy from us. Everybody's buying habits have kind of changed now. Mm. They're not putting all the eggs into one basket now, the quantity that they were buying before, they're not buying that now because they're protecting themselves. I, I understand mm. that. Um, and there's a lot of new lines which are coming in, but. You've got to kind of think to yourself, well, what do you want to do? Yes, we're going to stick to my trading business because they say stick to what you know. And I, I'm a firm believer of that. I think you should always stick to what you know. The trading business is great, but I think I want to um, improve on the, on the property side of things now. Uh, probably go a bit more into, into property, give a bit more time to the property now because, you know, it's great the portfolio that we have, the opportunity to develop now, which is something I'm looking at right now. Some might say it's not the right time because the cost of material and cost of labor, but it's going to stay stagnant around that now. We can't yeah. see much things coming down. Uh, yeah, or, or going going so there, so. It's, it's a good time. So I'd like to give a lot more time to business uh, and but more to my property side, maybe build on the property portfolio a bit more now. Um, the business is in, in a position where it's stable and it's, it's, it's turning over and it's doing OK. But there's other things that you want to do as well. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've been trying to do development now for the last, I think, 10 years. And me and my dad, we just kept putting it off because we're giving so much time to the business. I think now that I can kind of, I'll put the wheels in motion for that now already, so maybe it's time I can move on to the, on to the development side. I still like to do a lot more for, for charity. Uh, um, yeah. Something that me, my wife, my children, we're very, very passionate about, so maybe give a bit more time to that because we're not getting any younger, Kim. I mean, I'll be 15 in a couple of years. 
Um, so you know, it's, um, it's it's time to start putting strategies in motion now, uh, putting things into place where you want to do. I want to spend more time with my children. Um, I mean, my uh, eldest son is uh, playing a lot of county cricket now, so it means yeah. a lot of travelling, and I don't want to miss on that. Mm. I mean, I remember when, when we had sports days and, and, and cricket days, it was very difficult for my dad to take time out and come and watch that. But we may now make a conscious effort, my wife and I both, to make sure we're at all the cricket matches, we're there supporting him, and, and so he knows he's got our support behind us. Um, so, my eldest is at university now, so uh, she's pretty independent now. But it doesn't mean to say, you know, we don't talk. I'm on FaceTime all the time, we speak to her all the time. And my younger one's doing, the other one is doing GCC, so she needs more time. So I like to carry on giving a bit more time to family, a bit more time to charity and uh, expand the property side now. So that's, that's, that's the plans anyway. Yeah, it's a lot going on there. <laughs> it is, it is. And you know, it's, uh, we all do live hectic lifestyles. You know, it's when you have four children, um, yeah. life does become very hectic. And the amount of school activities these guys have, even Saturdays now, which is my day off, mm. I'm sidelining on the rugby pitch now. It's watching my son play rugby. So uh, every morning we're there, we're taking, the, and then the cricket season will start. So these are memories, mate. And yeah. these memories is what you've got to build for your children. I had a lot of very, very good memories uh, with my dad, and I would like to have those memories with my children. So tomorrow when we're gone, you know, they can appreciate how much time and effort we put this, and hopefully they will do the same with their children. That's it. And yeah, interesting, you say from, like you obviously got two daughters, two sons. Yes. Mashallah, and they're your two sons, or I or your two daughters. You know, I'm not saying it has to be a male thing. Do you think any of them are going to follow in the family footsteps into business? So, I had this conversation with my children. <laughs> I thought you might. Have. Yeah. Well, you do, don't you? Because <laughs> they see what your dad is doing, yeah. and um, and I said to see my my boys are very young, and I said to my daughters, listen, yeah. I don't want you to be reliant on anybody. I want you to be able to stand up on your own two feet and go out and do something for yourself. Mm. Don't, I'm there anyway. Whatever's mine is yours, right? But I want you to be, go, be able to go anywhere in the world and be able to stand on your own two feet. And that only comes through education. If you're educated yeah. and you've made a good career at yourself, it doesn't matter what, anything that happened, mm. you've got that behind you. You can stand up on your own two feet uh, and do it for yourself. So I wanted to make my, my, my daughter very independent, not to be self-reliant on anybody. And I think that's very, very important for, uh, for, for anybody, not just for girls, for anybody to be able to stand on your own. So education is key. So I think that was an uh, important thing. As far as my boys is concerned, usually kind of the, the boys come into the family businesses, but if my daughter had you know, they, that passion for it, of course I'd have her there. And they do come in, believe it or not, they do come in yeah. and, and help me out in the business. And uh, they like to sit there and go through the accounts and, and, and do all that kind of stuff. So just something so they understand what, we're, what I'm doing. Yeah. So they have a kind of a feel for something. And, and I think that's good for them because it kind of broadens their, their minds. Mm. You know, they might be going to science, they might be going to something else, but just a bit of knowledge about business, how business works. You know, we don't just go there, sit at a desk, buy products and sell products, other stuff involved in business. So they have that. Now the flair I see my youngest son, the youngest really? one. Really? Yeah. Uh, he's always talking to him about work and every time he's, it's a Sunday, he wants to come to work and he wants to stand behind the tills and scan the items and uh, <laughs> all the new, because you see these, they're a TikTok uh, yeah, generation, generation, aren't they? Yeah. So they see all these new lines uh, coming out. We have these kind of lines, so they're crazy about this kind of stuff. Um, so he sits on my dad's desk, which is still there, and he's picking up the phone and he's on the computer. I see that in him. My eldest son is more into sport yeah. and his education, so he's very concentrating a lot on his cricket. Although uh, Zahir, my youngest one, is very sporty as well, he enjoys his cricket. He, he, he's all rounded, he just he can put his head to it and get things done. So if there's anyone I'd say who might come into the business, I could see my youngest son do that. It, it's, it's got that flair in him and I see a lot of my father's traits in him. When yeah. people see him, they go, God, doesn't he look like your dad as yeah, well? Yeah, I think so. And he's very conscious yeah. about his dress and his hair. Yeah. I thought, God, is this my dad? <laughs> it's just, just the way he is. So, yeah, if, um, look, if they want to come in, you know, they're more than welcome to, but I would still say that I would like them to be educated first. Because yeah. see, education is not just a, you're keen to business. Education broadens the mind, and I think education teaches you a lot about a lot of things in life. Mm. Um, now, if you talk about my education at university, did I learn anything at university? No, I didn't. Box ticking exercise. It was just a, it was a box tick <laughs> exercise, and I learned. <laughs> okay, you listen. I, I wouldn't say you don't learn anything. You learn a little bit, right? Theory. But for me, my education started the day I walked through the doors and joined the business. Yeah. That's when my true education started. Um, so mm -hmm. that, that is very, very important, I think, to have experience in any field. 
I think that's more valuable. But education does teach you. you it kind of rounds you up. Yeah. It, it, it teaches you how to think. Um, you know, and I think that's quite important. So I would never knock anybody um, for, uh, for educating or going to university. I'm all for that. I think everybody should. Sometimes people don't get a chance. But then there's a lot of other opportunities out there now. Apprenticeship programs, I think they're fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my take on it. Whether they come in, entirely up to them, but I would like them to do their own thing uh, because we could see the way business has gone for the last, let's, let's take 30 years where it is now. It's kind of a spiral, kind of thing, up and down, up and down, and now we're seeing this. So I'm thinking, well, do you really want to come into this? Are you prepared to work the long hours that we did? Are you prepared to put, sacrifice a lot of your, your time? And I don't see that in young kids right now at the moment. Unless they've got an idea which they want to set up themselves, that's a separate thing altogether. But I just find that over the generations, it's kind of filtering through now. They yeah. haven't got that, that, that sort of fire drive at the moment anymore. It changes, doesn't it? It, it does, it does. But you can't things. blame them for that yeah. because over the years, a lot more things have come out. There's a lot of other opportunities out there. So yeah. why, not, why not let them go for the opportunities? Let them be uh, uh, their own makers, I think. Uh, but <laughs> we're behind them 100%. Whatever they want to do, yeah. Uh, and they can make a success out of it. As parents, I think we should support them and let them follow the dream. Although, unfortunately, I didn't get to follow my dream of becoming a pilot, but <laughs> that's a little other story for another day. But um, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's important, definitely. Excellent. We can still become a pilot. I can do it. A friend of ours, a mutual exactly. friend of ours, who's yeah. yeah. just, 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 just become a yeah, pilot. Yeah. It is. But then it's. it's um, I yeah, I think yeah. it's not me being selfish, but I want to do that. I'd rather spend more time with my children yeah. and let them follow. It's, it's their turn now. It's yeah. their turn now. Well, let them get a bit bigger then. And then maybe we can do the family firm. Then we could do the people. Yeah. Absolutely. So you're never too late for anything, right? You can always learn, right? <laughs> That's it, exactly that. So you mentioned it. Uh, I think, if I can say, whenever I went to an event, whenever I, whenever I saw your father, he's probably the best dressed person in the room. And it was his kind of thing. It was his signature. You know, he was always really well presented. And I obviously see that with yourself. And I've seen it with your kids. Mm. Is that something your dad spoke about? Was that obviously it was intentional? Yeah. You see, it made an impression. If I it? tell you something, mm. I never wore jeans until I was about 17, 18 years old. Really? And he would always say that I don't want to see you in jeans. These jeans are for people who collect garbage. That's what he said to me. Yeah. Because his dad used to say the same to him. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was only after 17 when I was, you know, starting yeah, yeah. college, I started wearing jeans. And then, but he always used to say that, look, always be smartly dressed. Mm. Don't look rough, you know. Um, number one, you're carrying on the legacy of the, of the family and the, out there, you should be very respectful and, yeah. and be respectful to people and talk in a primer proper way. And, uh, you know, enjoy yourself. Don't be a person that you're not, mm. but be a person who's confident. And I think your appearance brings a lot of confidence out in you. Um, so he was all for that. And, you know, like you said, uh, he was always groomed his hair and yep. he was always very immaculately dressed. And yeah, so you always say, look, make sure you, you, you always talk to people in a nice manner, but always dress in a nice manner and always give a firm handshake. Yeah. So I don't know if you've shaken hands with my sons, but they always give you a nice firm handshake because <laughs> that tells you a lot about a person. So there's certain things about a person that tells people a lot about you, how you are how you talk to them, how respectful you are to them, the way your appearance is, the way you shake their hand, the, your demeanor. Yeah. So these little things are very, very important, but they go a long way. Definitely, I agree with it. And uh, yeah, it's something that you can learn from. And uh, I will be checking my son's handshakes. <laughs> so I'll be, I'll be checking that tomorrow. So, so in the, obviously we, we spoke about TikTok in a few bits, but. So in your business and from like, yeah, the dynamic that you can see, we spoke about business changing now. Social media, the new buzzword. How important has that become within your own business? To be honest, we, we are traders, so we are wholesalers, so we're not so much on social media. Yeah. Um, even about developing our own website, say for example, mm. we have one, although we don't sell on there because we are selling onto customers who are selling onto Amazon and yeah. people. So, I'm kind of taking that th issue away from them. So I could have one. I have one a landing page of what we do, the products we sell. Yeah. But then if I'm selling a product, which my customer is buying and then selling it, I've got an unfair advantage on it because I've got the mm -hmm. cost price and they need to bring a price on. So I don't want to compete with them. 
I'd rather keep my customers happy yeah. and keep selling products to them. When certain lines come on and I see a nice hefty little margin, then I will sell it myself without giving it to the customers. But then, um, you know, we have to buy quite a lot of uh, a job out of those. So we could be spending 30, 40,000 pounds on a deal. Yeah. So then I would sell that to people like Amazon or other people that I sell to. Yeah. Um, but as far as like TikTok and all that is concerned, yeah, I do a lot of my charity stuff on, on yeah, TikTok. That goes on yeah. TikTok. But as far as my products can, because yeah, our products are always evolving. Mm. There's always new products coming in. And I remember we had these, uh, these, these key rings coming once, prime key rings. And he's only my, on my son today. I said, Dad, can I put these on TikTok? I said, do what you want with it? He started getting all these followers. And he goes, well, where did you get the key rings from? And he goes, my dad sells them at this place. <laughs> Go to him. <laughs> so it, it does work. And I think yeah, it works yeah. phenomenally well. Um, uh, social media has helped a lot of business take off. Um, not just uh, people in the sales, but also people in the service sector. Mm. I've seen your TikToks. Yeah. And I agree there, and I'm sure that brings a lot of customers. Um, so social media is key if you use it in the right way. I think it develops a lot. I think people are now even coming on themselves now and, and, and talking. There's a lot of these uh, mentors now coming on, on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do like that, actually. It's, it's, it's nice to listen to, uh, to quite a lot of them, but then there's a lot of people who think, well, you're giving all this business advice, but there's nothing behind you. There's no substance yeah, behind you. It. So everybody can be a mentor, but not everybody can be a true mentor. Yeah. But I think amongst our circle, there's a few people, I don't want to give names, but they're amazing. Yeah. You know, great businesses have done very, very well for themselves. Gone on to social media, selling themselves. Mm. So if you can sell yourself, there's no doubt you can sell your product. Yeah. Because it's, it's you selling that product. If you've mm. got the belief and the passion to, um, you know, that you can get this product sold. Well, if you can't sell yourself, how are you going to sell the product? Exactly. And I think that's very, very important. I think the person behind uh, the business is very, very key. Uh, it, tells, it gives a lot of confidence to the, to, the, to the buyer or your customer. And having that rapport with the customer is important. So, uh, yeah. like I said, I, we're not so much on the social media side of aspect. My charity, we do, we do a bit on there. But um, have a look at the trend of what's been happening in the last 10 years. I think it's, it's very, very key. We're very active on, on stuff like Facebook and stuff. We, we, we promote our company. but. As far as, as far as products are concerned, mm. for me it's very, very difficult because I don't want to have that unfair advantage of my own customers who are more important to me. Yeah. Because like you said before, you're, you're promoting your personal brand, your family brand yeah. on that and that's what you know, I see a lot of. It is. Like, you yeah. see, we're a, bit, we're, we're a family that's been established for over 50 years in the West Midlands. So uh, we're very fortunate that a lot of people do know us and that again comes down to a lot of hard work my father put initially. Mm. <laughs> I still have people now saying to me, I remember your grandfather. Our grandfather died in 1983. So people stay still, oh, good thing. It's been nearly four years for my father. And people still talk about him. And I, was, I would say it was probably a lot in the last 10 years that he was being interviewed by a lot of people, uh, yeah. and some mutual friends of ours, and um, he gave a lot of advice on business. And people like to listen to that. And that's where mm. Chutney came in, and then he, did, yeah. he gave a talk on that. Yeah. Ambassador for and I'm ambassador for Chutney and Chat, which I'm very yeah. proud of. And then I did my talk back in 2021, wasn't it? Yeah. 2020, 22, yeah. Uh, January 22. Yeah. And that was a long time coming, and Abi kept saying, we need you one, we need you one. And then uh, he gave me a 40-minute slot that day, in fact, yeah, to talk. Yeah. And he goes, I'm giving you 20 minutes more than what I give anybody else. And I said, Abi, I think 40 minutes is not enough. <laughs> and he goes, look, you just go on as much as you want to. I said, there's so much that you can cover. There's so much that um, experience I've gained over the years, and I'd like to share that experience with people. Um, because it was about a family business. Mm. How many family businesses are there now? Very few. Mm. I think people aren't prepared to put that time and effort into family business, but you know, I was there to tell them what the advantages and disadvantages are. Um, so again, that was social media, and I think a lot's happened in the last two, three years where you know, your personal brand is built as well. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's important. Uh, I would never knock it. I think it's a great tool if used correctly. And how, you know, with the Chutney Network, with you know, everything you've been involved in, uh, the network you've got around you, the network that's built around you, how much, how important do you think that's been in like your personal development, your business? For personal growth? development business? Yeah. I've had a couple of very good leads mm. from, um, uh, from the events like Chutney, etc. For me, it was more important of being able to give something back, yeah. pass on experiences. Having said that, some of the younger kids now, I tell you what the fear these guys have yeah. and the idea these guys have, I've had them come to my office and say, come on, let's have a chat about what you're doing because they're amazing some of the ideas these guys are coming up with, especially with property, how they're letting property out on social media. Yeah. We come to that point again. 
And it's something that we don't do. So although we like to give a lot of advice, but when I go to Chitney, you know, like you saw, people come up to us and say, can you help us? We're trying to launch this product or we're launching a sort of service, any advice you could give? And we give that advice. But what we're finding now over the last two, three years, we're actually taking a lot of advice on board as well. Even though we're, you know, we've been in business longer than them, it doesn't mean to say we're the best at what we do. It's all, like I said, you're always going to learn about something. So, you know, I've taken on a lot as well from, from the attendees at Chutney and Chat, but uh, it's nice that they, they give you respect, they come up to you and ask you for advice. And, and, and I'm always open, to, my door's always open. Yeah. That's one thing I always say. So, you know, I get emails as well sent to me, or uh, we've, I did a podcast before, and I had so many emails after that. Oh, we're trying to do this, any chance we could have a meeting? I said, of course you can. Mm. I said, this is where my office is, come and see me anytime you want to. Here's my phone number. Oh, we can have your phone number? I said, of course you can. There's nothing to hide. Mm. Uh, or via email, so it's it's nice being in, in a position that you can offer help. But it's nice that we are still learning and still taking help. So events, social events, networking events, is very important. I think everybody should get involved in, in those. Never be too shy. It can be daunting experience for a lot of people, you know, when you're first timers and all that. Uh, but a place like Chutney, we're very welcoming, we're very warm. You've been there many times. You know yeah. what we're like. Um, and then when you attend one, they attend two, attend three, you think, well, hang on, there's a reason why I'm attending because I'm actually, my business is actually growing out there. Yeah. Um, but now you, there's, there's so many, um, there's so many uh, network events out there. I was a board member of the ABCC for a year. Uh, then an opportunity came out to um, come on board as a, as a leadership for the Birmingham Ways and Bridges community for the IOD. Yeah. And IOD, as you know, is, is, is a nationwide massive organization. So to be able to launch the IOD um, to the Asian community and then, you know, to be able to do that at the House of Lords. Um, that was great. Um, so, you know, it's, it's nice that there's different segments of, of different areas within social events as well. Um, so we're trying to help and build a community where we're, we, we, we are able to get a lot of help to these uh, new people and, and, and trying to build on their business as well. So it's, for me, I think it's, uh, it's key, definitely. It's very, you know, the, the, all the guests we've had on so far, it's yeah, these recurring passions and networking and business networks and all this stuff. Because a lot of people, they go to the business networks and they think, uh, you know, who am I going to sell to? What am I going to do yeah, but here? Don't you think, you know? I mean, we've been to many, right? Is the quality of what's being offered out to, to you. Hmm. There's a lot of social events, which I tend not to attend as much. Um, but if you're offering good speakers and you're off, you've got a good um, um, database of, of people who regularly attend and a lot yeah. of new people attending all the time, you see, they're taking time out to come and improve something. So you've got to give some something of quality back. Now, we've had some great speakers in the past. Yeah. We had the, uh, Mr. Smith from Poundland recently. Yeah, that's it. And that was a great yeah. uh, um, uh, networking. Unfortunately, I wasn't there because I wasn't very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's the feedback you get because people want value for their money. Yeah. You know, now to attend an event, you pay money. So they want something back in value. So if you're able to offer that value to them and they're coming time and time again, you're doing something right. Definitely. So, obviously we're here today and we can't finish without talking about cars. <laughs> and I know you're a big lover of cars. This is your lovely it is. 911 Turbo here today. Uh, so you've had, how many 911s have you had now? Uh, this is now my fourth. Fourth, mm. wow. So they obviously tick a few boxes. Yeah, you. first one I bought was about 18 years ago. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, I bought, the, I bought the 996 uh, Carrera 4S. That's the first one I had. and I, just fell in love with them, you know. Yeah. I, from a very, very young age, I remember this film, and I, and I cannot remember the name of the film, it wasn't that bad boys, it was long before that, this kid driving this 911, I thought, what a fantastic car this is. And then you saw the bad boys car, and I just always fell in love with 911s, I just loved the, the, the shape of the cars. Um, so yeah, when, I think it was my 30th birthday, I think it was, and I bought my first uh, 996 Carrera 4S. Um, then I had a few cars in between, and I went to back to another 996 4S convertible. Yeah. Uh, I never buy a convertible again. Uh, well, it's just you can have a conversation in the car. Um, then I've had a 991 again career for us, but my ultimate passion was always the 9, yeah. uh, 911 Turbo S. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I remember when I bought my last 911, <clears throat> and I always keep cars for two years, three years maximum, I keep them. Mm. And I remember buying that car, and my dad said, You're going to keep that for a car for four years. I've never had a car for four years. I've never kept a car for four years. You know, I always change after two, three years. He said, now that one you're going to keep for four years. He goes, because I love the colour, I love the interior. What colour was that one? It, uh, it was white with the red, white one, red yeah, interior. Yeah, the white one, yeah. Um, so I bought that, um, 
And then when my dad passed away, I had the car for two years. Mm. And I saw a lot of cars in between, but I thought, no. Dad said four years, I've got to keep it for four years. Um, and I loved it, you know, it's, for me, it's, it's a very practical car. Yeah. I, I use it as an everyday vehicle. Uh, I, you know, it's, I, I don't have to worry too much because it's a bit underrated. It's not your Ferrari or your Lamborghini where yeah. you're going to be a bit careful leaving it parked up. Uh, but this one is another beast altogether. Yeah. It's, 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 it's something else altogether. The power of this car um, and just the shape and the looks, I think they did phenomenally well with the 992 and the line yeah. and, the, and the chain of the vehicle. I think it's, it's, it's a lovely, lovely car. Very powerful as well. And it's if you know, something's not broken, you don't need to tweak it. You don't much. need nothing yeah. to it. It's, it's, yeah. I've never been one to um, stop putting different wheels on cars and spoilers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't do any of that. I like to keep my car original as yeah. much as you can. What more can you do with that? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a fantastic <laughs> car. But I've had a lot of cars in between from when I started, and uh, I've had uh, Merc, Mercs in between and um, uh, BMWs. But this for me is just the ultimate yeah. vehicle. The, especially the power on this car is just there's a, there's a reason why they make it they call it the widow, widow maker right yeah that's it <laughs> but not that we do that we still drive at 70 miles an hour so it's, of course. Uh, it's all good <laughs> so just for uh, the racetrack and private i never events. i would never yeah. race my car i don't race my <laughs> vehicles either too. i'll use other vehicles but not my, my own car's racetrack but yeah. no, it's, it's a great car and uh yeah look it's it's um it's every boy's dream is a car so it's every boy's yeah, dream exactly. as it is my kids you can see through them now but um i think these are little luxury that you kind of um get yourself for you know the work that you do and the hard work that you put in and Definitely. it's nice to give yourself a little treat now again i think that, yeah. that that's very very important Definitely. um and if you desire to get more and accumulate more and do a lot more out there so that's are your important. kids into cars yeah very much so my boys have always been into cars yeah. how about uh, your daughters uh yeah they they, they yeah. love their cars my older one um she'll be driving very very soon as well my younger one turns 17, so she's looking forward to uh, sitting her driving lessons. Yeah. Um, my wife at the same time, she does all the school runs and everything, so she has a big X7. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but I do miss that car as well. It's, it's, it's such a comfortable car to drive. Yeah. And believe it or not, a lot of the times I left the Porsche and I'll take the X7 and get the yeah. missus, she'll drive the, she'll drive the Porsche. But she's a good driver. <laughs> which, she, she's do, a good driver. let your wife drive the Porsche? She does, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and awesome. she's, she's a good driver, very yeah. good, confident driver. Bit of a heavy right foot, <laughs> but you know, Alhamdulillah, she's got a, a clean license. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, she's, uh, she's good. So, no, she's, uh, she's good as gold as well. So, yeah, yeah. awesome. Because yeah. I know that I remember from a young age, your dad used to have the latest S Class. He was always a Merkman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always from, had from, the S Class, yeah. From as far as we can remember, from the very old, I think, was it E231s? I, I can't remember the name. The numbers are 221. So, he, I remember yeah. the day he bought that car, actually. He's had, uh, he's had a few of them. Um, so, once he, yeah, I remember him saying, once you go to Merk, you won't go anywhere else. And he's absolutely right. It's mm. it's a fantastic car to drive. Although I think the build quality of them is probably not as good as they were before, but the yeah. comfort you got in the Mercs. Yeah. It's 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 great. And he's always been into that his E classes, then from E class he went to S classes. And he never looked back after that. Yeah. Uh, and it was only um, two years before he passed away and we thought, Dad, maybe it's time you got yourself a nice car now. And he goes, Nah, I'm not happy with my Merc, it's it's come to us. Treat yourself that. So I remember I went down to the garage and I, and I, and I, I said, what about Rolls Royce? He goes, nah, that's for all people. They're boring old cars. I don't, I don't <laughs> Rolls Royce. I want something a bit more power in it. <laughs> so then we saw the Bentley Speed, the Mulsam. And I went to see it, uh, a friend of mine and uh, I actually put a deposit on the car. Yeah. And I went and told him, I said, dad, this is in the, I've seen a Mulsam. Uh, I think it's really nice. Um, then he went along and he goes, uh, yeah, actually, you know what? I do like it. So we've done the deal and uh, yeah, still got that car. Yeah, it's a see. fantastic car. Not a very practical car at all. <laughs> miles per gallon, but I don't even talk about that. Yeah, yeah. eight. A little bit more than eight. Yeah, uh, ten. You try to drive <laughs> a bit more, so you see the numbers going yeah, yeah, yeah. up. But six point seven liters. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it's a powerful car. You've had it in here. You've seen, yeah, yeah. you've seen the vehicle very high. But and uh, they're very long as well, isn't it? Extremely long car. Yeah. I do tend to use it a lot on, on motorways. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want to open the vehicle up because you don't yeah, drive yeah. as much. Especially but we do like two thousand miles a year in the car. Mm. But it's a sentimental value, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's more of a tuxedo than a... It is, it is. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's just that that's his thing. So we just leave that part there for a little yeah. while and then we do take it out. But no, I enjoy it. It's, uh, I think cars is a nice treat. I think every boy is, is a car man. And I think cars um, play a big part in your life. It tells you a lot about personality, uh, your personality. You know, it's something you've got to enjoy now and again, isn't it? Yeah. You know, just that journey from home to work or work to home. Yeah. You know, you want that to be a bit of an enjoyable journey as well. Um, so no, all thanks to God. Yeah. Well, thanks to God. Definitely. Um, I'm in your 
on the same page as you on, on all of that. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So just talking about the market and talking about different things. Electric mar- electric cars, hydrogen cars. What are your thoughts on it all? Are you into it? It's not my thing, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can see you. I I, <laughs> I don't like electric vehicles. Uh, yeah. I don't think this country is geared or even set yeah. up towards electric vehicles. Mm. And the people I do know who've got electric vehicles, they're always worrying about, oh, we're running out, we need to go and charge this up. They've got this issue that, you know, uh, they need to get this vehicle charged and all that. I'd hate to be in that position. You see, we're business people. Yeah. I could be sitting in the office, the deal need to be in London, and I've got to be in London in two and a half hours. And I've got to ring the guy and say, sorry, mate, can you give me an hour? I need to charge my vehicle up. I've got time for that. I said, get in there and go. Yeah, and drive on demand. And it's not, it's the power of the, I mean, the electric vehicles, yes, yeah, some of them are extreme, like the Panamera, uh, sorry, the uh, Taycan, Taycan yeah. and the Teslas, they're amazing. Uh, but don't you think they feel like just fast roller coasters? That's what it is. Yeah. Where's the buzz of the sound, the engine noise, all that kind of stuff? For me, it's not a car. I'm not electric by a person. What my kids might be doing in the next, I don't know, 20, 30 years yeah. is a different story. And I think the PM is completely wrong. This country is nowhere near geared up for electric vehicles. And they've just come out, so we don't know what faults are gonna happen with these vehicles. Because exactly. once you get a big fault in a vehicle, yeah. that whole car is coming in. Yeah. You know, especially a major component, yeah, like yeah. a battery component. And um, they've got to figure it out, because at the moment, everyone's a guinea pig. No. So, like, when you're driving around now, how many electric points do you actually see? Yeah. Not that many. I'm probably in 40 services. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Where you see a whole line of them. Yeah. But, uh, but if you look at Europe, Europe is geared, America is geared up. Yeah. We are nowhere, we haven't got the money for it, for the infrastructure. So it's told people by 2030, 2035, we're all going to be electric. I don't believe that. And I think Porsche said recently, they're never going to bring out an electric version of 911. They probably will eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's not going to be 911 again. Yeah. That, 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 the whole combustion engine, everything, that's what we need. That's, all, that's, all, that's how we've grown up. So me, electric vehicle, definitely no, no. No chance. You won't <laughs> see me on that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Long live petrol and diesel. Yeah, definitely, 100%. <laughs> Excellent. So, to kind of cap off and kind of finish off. That's, again, thank you very much for your time. No, thank it's you so much. Absolutely invaluable. But to the audience and to the listeners, what would be your top tips for business for someone starting out? For someone starting out, I think follow your dream. There's uh, ha- have a have a passion and build on that passion. I think it's very very important because you've got to have a, a certain element of what you want to do and how you want to do it. So you know, businesses always stem from a certain mind that you have, a thought that you have, a certain product that you have. And for me, you've got to put your full soul, mind, attention, make it a passion and make it successful. No, don't let anybody say anything otherwise. You don't let anybody say you can never do it. I'm a firm believer. If you believe in yourself and you believe in some, a certain product or a certain service, no one can stop you, you know, because you've got your mind set on that you want to get this done and you can get it done. Only you know how hard you're willing to prepare to work for something like this. Nothing comes easy. It's a lot of a roller coaster to to get to where you want to be, but just follow your dream and follow that passion and you'll succeed in anything that you do. And be positive. That's important. Brilliant. Absolutely invaluable. So take note. (laughs) (laughs) But thanks very much again. No, thank you for having uh, me, Cam. Thank you. It's been really great. It's uh, it's nice to sit in the... Uh, being interviewed by somebody. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's nice to have a chat in front of a camera. Of course it is. Of course. <laughs> cameras, what cameras? We don't listen yeah. to cameras. <laughs> well, no, Cameron, thank much. you very much. Yeah, thank you. Real pleasure. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching our episode today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and got some really good advice and tips from it. Uh, please do like and subscribe uh, to our channel and there'll be more content and more interviews like this coming soon. I'm very proud to have been interviewed here by Cam at MotorServe UK TV. It's a fantastic channel, we've been following it for quite some time and it has some great people coming on. So you must like, subscribe and follow MotorServe UK TV uh, and hear a lot of different stories from different people from different businesses and uh, do tune in.